Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Greetings and good day, ladies and gentlemen. May I have your attention, please? Our session is about to begin soon. Before we start, I would love to have a few housekeeping to ensure the smoothness of the event. On behalf of the committee members, we would like to seek everyone's cooperation to do as follows. First, for any inquiries, you may write it down in the chat box. Second, guests may download the virtual program book by clicking on the link given in the chat box. Third, guests may fill out the registration and attendance form before the session ends. Thank, Thank you, you for, for your cooperation and attention. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Greetings and a very good morning. Welcome to the 8th Walk TVET 2022. First of all, allow me to extend the warmest welcome to the Honorable Guest, Professor Technologist Dr. Barasi Bambaraza, Dean Faculty of Technical and Vocational Education, UTHM, Associate Professor, Technologist Dr. Mimi Mohafiza Muhammad, the Chairman of Walk TVET 2022, Associate Professor Dr. Margarita Pavlova, Director Univox Center, the Education University of Hong Kong, Technologist Dr. Yusma Yusof, Yusmawati Yusof, Senior Lecturer of Faculty of Technical and Vocational Education, UTHM, Dr. Yung Ah Kang, Lecturer, Korean Polytechnic, Kopo, Associate Professor Dr. Anna, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, UPI, Academician, Waktivet 2022 Workshop Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen. Alhamdulillah. First of all, let us pray to the Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for His blessing, without which we cannot gather around here today to join the forum and closing ceremony of the 8th World Conference on Tivet 2022, Brazilian Tivet in Buka World towards the needs of global development. I'm Abdul Wafi Abdul Rahman, your host for today. Ladies and gentlemen, this Ed Work TV 2022 event is organized by the Faculty of Technical and Vocational Education, UTHM, and Malaysia Research Institute for Vocational Education and Training, MyRivet, UTHM. This morning, the event will be divided into two sessions. The first session is keynote address featuring a profession speaker. This is followed by a forum that will be delivered by three panels. Afterwards, the afternoon session is meant for paper presentation session. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, before we begin this workshop, I would like to invite Ustaz Muhammad Amirul Hakim bin Saparuddin for the uh, recitation. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Al-Fatiha. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم يا رحمن ويا رحيم يا الله وهي تهن كمي سجل بوجي دن بوجي سرت شكر دي بنجت كن كبده مو يا الله دي تاس كل رحمة دن يعمة دي انتلاه كن كوني كن كبده كمي كمي برمهون اعرن كن بركاتي دن رحمتي له بروجرام ايك ويل كونفرنس اون تي في 2022 ini jadikanlah program ini sebagai suatu majlis yang diberkati dan diredoi olehmu ya Allah dengan keberkatan majlis ini, Ya Allah, kami memohon taufik dan hidayahmu. Kurniakanlah kesejahteraan, kebahagiaan dan keselamatan. Anugerahkanlah kepada kami kesihatan yang sempurna, akal yang cerdas, hati yang terang bagi menjalankan tugas yang telah diamanahkan kepada kami. Allahumma ya zal jalali wal ikram. Ya Allah, wahai Tuhan kami, perilukan untuk kami agama kami yang menjadi penjaga urusan kami. Perilukan untuk kami dunia kami yang menjadi tempat hidup kami. Perilukan untuk kami akhirat kami yang menjadi tempat kembali kami. Allahumma ja'al jam'ana hadha jam'an marhuma. Wa tafaruqana min ba'dihi tafaruqan ma'asuma. 
ولا تجعل اللهم فينا ولا معنا ولا من يسبعنا شقيا ولا مطرودا ولا محروما ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك أنبنا وإليك المصير ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين تقبل الله منكم Alamin. Thank you Ustaz for the recitation. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are bringing to you the montage for introducing the 8th World Conference on TVET 2022. Let's enjoy the montage. Attention on the montage. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the session of keynote presentation. Please allow me to introduce our keynote speaker. Our keynote speaker is Associate Professor Dr. Margareta Pavlova, Director Univox Center at the Education University of Hong Kong. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me for a brief introduction about our speaker today. Dr. Margareta Pavlova obtained two Philosophy of Doctor PhDs, one from Australia and another PhD from Russian University. She completed her Master's of Education from USA and Bachelor of Education in Russia. As she said, Professor Dr. Pavlova is the director of the Univox Center of Hong Kong, which is a member of the global UNESCO Univox Network. She is currently and associate professor at the Department of International Education, the Education University of Hong Kong. Her research focuses on policy, planning, and curriculum development in vocational education at both national and international levels, with a particular emphasis on education for sustainable development, green skills development, and a greening of the vocational education sector. Recently, she has been a consultant for the Skills Future Singapore Agency on a training and adult education landscape in a Singapore study. Currently, she is supporting a project for the ETF on green skills in 17 partner countries of the European Union. Without further delay, I would like to invite Dr. Margareta Pavlova to deliver her speech on Empowering Women to Educators' Educators' Competency in VUCA World. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Associate Professor Dr. Margareta Pavlova to deliver her speech. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is my great pleasure to present at the World Conference on Tibet 2020. Conference organizers gave me this topic to address. And today I want to examine the following points short um, review of the background, then the reasons why Tibet should respond to the VUCA world, and then some solutions that we can propose. So uh, in terms of the background, I want to cover two concepts, green economy and the VUCA world. 
Um, now we have the um, agenda that identified 17 sustainable development goals that cover the areas of natural environment, society, and economy. And this agenda described the particular view world of them, of our existence or how we should live lives. And um, uh, on the right of my screen, you can also see the figure that demonstrate the importance of the values, because these values determine our behavior and this behavior and behavior change we want to achieve through addressing these sustainable development goals. And then the better society in which we live will affect our values. And um, a greening economy is an essential part of sustainable development. And the uh, green economy is the one that um, is low carbon, reduced resource efficient and socially inclusive. It also brings together environmental, social and economic advancements and um, generate millions of additional jobs. However, in the short term, it might be not so profitable, but in the long term, it is profitable. And the studies by the ADB, World Bank, uh, European Union and uh, OECD prove that. When we're talking about the Buca world, it um, characterized by volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. So in this world, information is available and the situation can be understandable, but changes are very frequent and sometimes are unpredictable. There is also the lack of knowledge that um, uh, it is not easy for us to establish this cause and effect relationship. And so we also don't know what events will create significant change and uh, what events will not. In terms of complexity, we're living within a very elaborated networks of information and procedures. And sometimes it's very difficult to understand what are the core issues where we should start if we want to achieve change? And in terms of ambiguity, um, it is uh, very difficult to make predictions and um, to tell with a certainty what to expect. So when we are talking about the companies or enterprises who exist in this environment, how they can address these challenges so they really need to look at the resources and how to use them to create the potential for future flexibility. They also need to gather new data and consider it from new perspectives. They need to match their own operations and processes to mirror environmental complexities. And they also determine what strategies are and not beneficial to, for their company, so they need to be engaged in the intelligent experimentation. And as you can see, these processes require specific skills at the high level, middle level, and low level. And when we are talking about uh, greening of economy, this volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity related very closely to the processes that we observed and countries are trying to green their economy. And um, uh, new green technologies and innovations, and um, uh, for example, the renewable energy, they're giving rise to an ever-changing world of work and societies. Also, individuals may see no plausible way for them to alter the degradation trajectory of the societies and economies because they're not sure how their contribution might change that. And also drivers of social and industrial, um, and, and sorry, the 
diversity of um, social and industrial context uh, require the diversity in terms of um, learning needs and learning opportunities we need to provide. And then unprecedented transitions and impacts of climate change also um, provide a lot of um, difficulties for the workforce to comprehend and adapt. So when we're talking about the volatility, there is the climate inflation. That means that um, prices increases in many economies caused by climate-related natural disasters and physical uh, risks, droughts, heavy rainfall, frost. They um, affect, for example, the food prices that is really essential for the people who are struggling to meet ends. Fossilification. This is the legacy cost of the dependency on fossil energy sources. And here we can talk about the moderately higher inflation. And uh, we can see that global capital investment in energy is expected to double by 2030. That the transitions involved um, increase in demand for commodities such as lithium, carbonate, cobalt, nickel. Green premiums represent the cost of choosing a cleaner technology over the traditional one. And also the lack of carbon pricing or the uh, role of the regulations that might result in higher energy prices. Um, another aspect of fossil, fossil inflation is the turbulence. Green energy investment is not ramping up nearly quickly enough. Half of technologies needed to achieve net zero emission by 2050 don't yet exist commercially. Energy is highly regulated industries and our laws and regulations are enormously outdated. And energy transitions always take a very long time. And if we look at the historical perspective, 60 years of change, and the red line represents coal from the end of 19th century, and then oil, dark blue, from the beginning of the 20th century, and the natural gas from 1930s, you can see that the changes have been achieved very slow. So these historical um, accounts um, make us doubt that the timelines that we put in place for renewable energy might be achieved. Maybe it is over optimistic. In terms of volatility, we can talk about greenflation. Green technologies require significant amounts of metals and minerals, which are in short supply now. And for example, if we look at the electric vehicles, they use over six times more minerals than the conventional cars. Or offshore wind plants require seven times more the amount of copper compared with the gas-fired plant. And uh, <clears throat> we know that as demand rises, the supply is constrained in a short and medium term. So Typically, we need five to 10 years to develop a new mines. So there is a great challenge here. And also it's important to remember about the paradox, the faster and more urgent the shift to a greener economy becomes, the more expensive it might get in a short run. In terms of uncertainty, it is crucial for the individuals to believe that their action can make a difference before engaging, particularly when the act in question is effortful, costly, or inconvenient. And also it is important to believe that one's action can make a meaningful impact on the sustainability agenda. And so these might directly inspire a willingness to act. However, presented with global environmental problems, individuals could feel aligned, so they believe that it is important, but they might not behave in the particular way because 
if uh, they wouldn't believe that their action will bring the immediate change. And here is the example, because we should convince people that our action are important and they're bringing change. Yes, this is the, uh, how um, greenhouse gas emissions affect the um, rise in temperature on our planet. And the red line, on, this is a different type of modeling, yes? So the red line shows how greenhouse gas emission will influence temperature if we're not taking any actions. And then the models uh, that are represented here by different, by different colors, like blue, dark blue, orange, they represent different type of efforts we are putting in decrease the temperature. So this is uh, visually represents that the effort we put in, what results we will get. And the same here, greenhouse gas emissions by different economic sectors, direct and indirect. So we can see that if we're working in agriculture or buildings or transport or energy production, if we're making our processes and operations greener, we will directly decrease the greenhouse gas emissions in our economic sector. So this research and data is important to share with our students to demonstrate them that the effort is really important. And then the next issue is complexity. And as I mentioned, we have the 16 uh, sustainable development goals and then 17th goal is a partnership. So the way we can achieve our agenda and it is very diverse. It's going from transitioning to low carbon economies, increasing production, consumption in a sustainable manner, conserving biodiversity, building human resource capacity, et cetera, et cetera. So we all know that these issues are really complex and we need to address them together in a holistic the result. And this is just one example to illustrate this complexity. I want um, to show the results of reporting on achievement of sustainable development goals. And this is a um, report from 2021. So this is Sustainable Development Goal 13, Climate Action, and Sustainable Development Goal 9, Industry, Innovation, and Infrastructure. So if you look at Sustainable Development Goal 13, you can see that a number of countries have, have colored in green. That means that they're achieving Sustainable Development Goal in this area. And these are a lot of countries from Africa and India. But when we look at this um, sustainable development goal that relates to industry innovation, these exact countries are red. That means that their major challenges remains. So this demonstrates the tension between economic development and environmental protection and the complexity of the issues that we are meeting now. Another example that green economy conceived as um, effective and all-rounded solutions for um, different challenges or issues like protection the environment, creating a better future for our children, improving quality of life, minimizing climate change, etc. But however, in practice, um, it is very difficult to achieve and the reports on, on the sustainable development goal demonstrates this to us. Um, the next um, characteristics of our um, world is ambiguity. And here I'm addressing or highlighting the um, impact on industries, skills required, challenges the current workforce needs due to the green transitions. And um, we can see that there are a lot that we need to think of when we're constructing or developing our courses or policies for vocational education. And um, this is the example that demonstrates this um, <clears throat> issue, ambiguity. So you can see that some um, occupations or some sectors that uh, relates to energy are 
will be growing in terms of employment and some of the sectors like gas, oil, coal will be uh, decreasing the employment opportunities for the people. So you can see the challenges that vocational education will have in addressing this shift as in terms of designing new training programs. And um, these analysis show in more detail what type of training needs we need to address if we're talking, for example, on greening of transport or greening of buildings. And um, there is a list that says that skills um, upgrading in terms of energy efficiency, green technologies, new materials, energy auditing and certification if we're talking about green uh, buildings. So this analysis helped Tibet to understand the pathways for the future development. So why is it essential for Tibet to respond to the VUCA world? And um, here I want to refer to the new UNESCO strategy for Tibet. And they highlighted that the world of work is in multiple transitions. And you can see the issues identified in this strategy that are related to economic recovery, technological change, informal economy, demographic transitions, social and political issues, and sustainable development. And the um, new Tibet strategy recognized that we should achieve change in all these dimensions. And um, most of them I mentioned previously when I was talking about greening of economy. And in terms of sustainable development, this green transition, climate change, biodiversity, I think that um, solutions that we can um, suggest also uh, be related to economic recovery or technological change or informal um, opportunities uh, for employment. And UNESCO proposed three strategic priorities that relates to developing skills for the individuals and their benefits, and for economies <coughs> and societies. And it is <coughs> really important to understand that we are not only focusing on economies, although greening of economies, which is my topic, is really important, but also on the benefits for the individuals and on the benefits for societies. So that's why we're talking about greening economies and societies and skills that can support that. What is also important is that um, the strategy highlights the importance of Tibet to be a proactive player. Yes, Tibet systems should be proactive in the way they adapt their training supply to the benefits of individuals, economies and societies. Of course, we are responding to the needs of the labor market, but we need to be proactive in understanding what does it mean. And um, here, this is just definition as a reference point. Yes, so what do we mean by green economy and green skills and greening of human capital? And so you can see that all of them relates to the significantly reducing environmental risks and environmental depletion and also relates to the social cohesion and inclusion. And this also highlights that it is important to develop strategies for greening economy, but also strategies for greening human capital, because without green skills, it would be impossible to achieve our vision of a green economy. So when we're talking about greening and um, VUCA world and how Tibet should reply, so how is it different to the business as usual? Yes, when we are focusing on addressing labor market needs. So we need to be one step ahead to create the demand. Yes, so for example, based on the research projects we conducted in Asia Pacific, yes, capacity building for industry to conduct training in relation to greening. Yes, for example, industries here asked us to develop some training units for them. Yes, predicting labor market needs that um, refer to greening of economies plans and start training for the required occupations. Then support green entrepreneurship to generate jobs like short training for communities, for example, 
setting up TVET enterprises to produce green products so students can develop their skills, but also it will be a benefit for society. Introducing green practices into training courses for future developments in industry. So even maybe there is no immediate demand in industry, you can still introduce some green practices because we know that the whole economy is moving in that direction. Also, what is important is to educate TVET students as citizens who are ready to accept sustainable development agenda and leave for its implementation. To acquire green skills supply for inclusion of environment related elements into national skills standards and to include generic green modules or topics on greening into all products and support greening of communities. So this is how we can um, respond to the challenges of today's world. And here I just want to talk uh, a little bit more about solutions and um, provide the ideas that I shared with you in the previous slide within the table format so you can see how the strategies that I'm suggesting relates to volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Uh, ambiguity, ambiguity, sorry. So you can see that um, we need to develop green skills, positive attitudes, need to make sure that students understand latest trends and industrial practices in greening through the topics on sustainable development goals, green economies, environmental regulations and green skills. And also we need to bring these real life examples into our classroom so the students understand the context and understand the changes are happening. Uh, we also need to encourage students to experiment and innovate and collaborate with industry and community so the students can see these real world um, issues and also opportunities in terms of greening. So skills for greening economies and greening of industries is an essential part that we need to address and green skills are those that reduce environmental impact, but also provide decent work conditions. This is more generic um, uh, definition and also one from NCVR Australia. You can see technical skills, knowledge, values and attitudes needed in the workforce to develop and support sustainable social, economic, environmental outcomes in business, industry and community. So then, many definitions of green skills, but you can see the core, the essence is to reduce environmental impact and improve um, decent work conditions. And uh, previously I have been um, talking about uh, typology of green skills and what does it mean, how we can um, develop them through different TVET settings. So today I just want to highlight the level of generic green skills because we need to address them through all our training programs. And the base for that, of course, is some attitude, positive attitude towards sustainable development and the need to, to develop this in our students for different type of activities. So when we are talking about these generic green skills, their core competencies that are needed in almost any occupations. And then they facilitate the future workforce or the current workforce to understand the green growth issues, increase the environmental awareness and ability to act based on this understanding and positive environmental attitude. And we can develop them through the specific modules, teaching and learning activities, and also work-based training. And um, these are the specific skills that are included in genetic green skills. So you can see cognitive, interpersonal and intrapersonal competencies. Um, and they, um, they have been identified by OECD as important, but here I put them into the context of greening. So this is the generic competencies put in the context of greening. And then the fourth one, one is technological competencies. And here we see these general practices that we can find over different industries. 
and um, we need to include them into our training so students can understand these technological aspects of greening yes like um, management of um, water energy and waste or monitoring waste energy and water quantification um, measuring the impact uh, measuring risk also procurement the green procurement very important and materials that are used so also important to understand how to minimize them and what sort of impact they have on our um, environment and greening processes and this is the um, website we developed we have some resources that are available open access and some resources for uh, which you need to become a member of our community and uh, through these um, resources we are um, developing generic green skills in students and teachers and we had a number of projects for which we delivered that and here i just want to highlight that we identified 21 concepts under 10 sustainable development goals and here you can see examples uh, and then we address them through our training with the students for example decent work and economic growth corporate social responsibility social enterprise quality of life and economic indicators we addressed as i said 21 concept under different sustainable development goals and you can see i highlighted by the green circle, uh, the one that um, uh, is included. Yes, here, for example, uh, innovation of the industry, here, renewable energy, um, climate action, we have clean water, uh, sustainable urban development, etc. And we uh, put these concepts, uh, we classified them under environmental, eco economic and socio-environmental uh, because when we looked at the uh, sustainable um, development reports or reports that assessed implementation of sustainable development goals we realized that the issues that are um, related to environmental um, change are most problematic in our um, area and as i said it is very important for the students to demonstrate what is happening in the industry so they can see that the effort people are putting in changing situation can actually bring the results so we included case studies that um, are related to different industries like transport agriculture knowledge sector hotel industry waste management construction etc and um, uh, for each, uh, when we're developing resources for, as I said, we have concepts and also case studies, and uh, we have the description of the concept on the information sheet, and then student worksheet where we uh, advise students what activities they need to undertake so they can understand the concept better, and also teachers' guidelines so uh, to help teachers um, in. Um, organizing the lesson and also provide some possible answers for the discussions that um, we invite students to participate in and uh, the structure of the case studies is the same we have the description of the case study and then student worksheet and teacher guidelines and these are related to our ideas how we can bring the world into our classroom how we can simulate what is happening in the world of work into our classroom and engage students and this is just the example how it looks like for example concept um, information sheet on greening technologies we related to the particular sustainable development goal we have definitions and then we describe like different aspects of this um, concept we also related to the application of daily life, application in the industry and some other notes that we want to take uh, students through. So here it is green buildings. And then the same, uh, this is some student worksheet. Also, you can see that we're talking about the genetic green competences that the students will develop. So what they would be able to do, how long it will take, what resources, what activities they need to undertake and what is the assessment so we're applying a more student-centered pedagogy and so students they can guide their learning 
themselves and then have a lot of discussions in the classrooms with their teachers. And here, this is the example of the teachers guidelines where we provide additional information for teachers so it's easier for them to prepare for the class and some answers. And this is a case study, the same. This is a case study about green technology and we chosen green construction in Hong Kong. We have a number of buildings here and we are also looking at some technical solutions that makes these um, solutions greener. We use the same resources for teacher training for Greening Tibet, and we had a project supported by UNESCO last year. A number of countries were involved, 100, almost 170 teachers. And um, we, uh, at the beginning, we assessed uh, teachers. It was self-assessment in terms of competencies that they have in relation to greening, how to introduce it into their curriculum. So competency items in professional knowledge, professional practice and professional engagement. And we looked at different percentage and then we identified the areas that are most problematic. So we addressed it. For example, in terms of professional knowledge, how to organize concepts related to sustainable development into themes and modules, how to design and implement learning activities, etc. In terms of professional practice, yes, how to plan each activity within and across several lessons, how to select and design resources. And actually for our teacher training, we also designed um, uh, resources, um, industry case studies that are specific for the countries, uh, for the context of the countries that were participating in this project and they're also on the website. And professional engagement, yes, how to um, collaborate with professional networks and participate in them and to improve their knowledge. So that relates to skills. Also, I mentioned today that positive attitude, sustainable development or our values are really important and we can develop it by different means. Here I brought some examples from our ADB project, greening of campuses and uh, from different uh, levels of vocational schooling. And you can see some images, they produce the biogas in this very poor community. It was some um, Bosco College in Sri Lanka. Then innovative responses for different challenges of sustainable development. Again, just one example. So this is the students, they design this electric um, vehicle and they also develop their skills when they're producing it. And then they negotiate with the government and they bought it for some theme parks yeah, and helping yeah. communities. And um, um, you can see that there are the benefits for the engagement in um, these activities for the students. It's beneficial for the students, for communities, for the region. And um, it can be in different forms, formal, informal, direct or indirect. And this is the example, for example, you can see the uh, design of the water pump, solar water pump to help communities um, to have an access to the water. Collaboration with the industry, we had different projects again. And here is the example of the hotel industry, how to um, improve the partnerships. Because usually we only send students to the industry, very rare industries engaged in other aspects of curriculum development and uh, assessment. But here we identify a number of areas in which um, uh, hotel industry were interested in um, and you can see them at the top of the screen for tomorrow. And um, these areas were important for the industry. And when we talk to the vocational education institutions, they said that they can collaborate on that areas. Okay, so now I want to summarize my presentation. So um, definitely TVET can contribute to deal with the challenges of today's world and the specific areas for the contribution are related to the direct contribution to the processes of greening economy, skills for environmental industries, generic green skills, and topping up skills for all industries when we're introducing green technologies, developing positive attitudes towards sustainable development issues, 
and also provide adaptive and innovative responses to different challenges of sustainable development, including climate change, and empower communities through skills development programs and students' engagement with communities and entrepreneurial skills. And of course, collaboration with industry for greening. So partnership across all levels is extremely important and um, our research demonstrates that to include green skills in TVET curriculum requires a great deal of political support and commitment, regulatory and institutional frameworks, TVET institutions initiatives, or as we said, TVET should be proactive, active involvement of industry in terms of partnerships in different areas, not only in providing um, training spaces for the students, and also financial as well as technical intellectual investment in terms of mapping skills needed for um, occupations for greening and then uh, what training and retraining um, provision we have versus the demand. And also a multiple public, private and community sector partnerships and teachers professional development, which is really important, particularly their pedagogy because when we're talking about sustainable development issues, we need to involve student-centered pedagogy. So that's um, it from me, and um, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Assistant Professor Dr. Margareta Pavlova for the very informative sharing. Thank you, and thank you. Distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the University Tun Hussein of Malaysia, UTHM, we would like to say thank you, you for being here and welcome to forum session with the team Empowering Women Tibet Educators Competency in VUCA World. Without any further ado, we would like to pass this forum session to the moderator of the session, Associate Professor Technologist Dr. Dora Islamiyah Rosli. Associate Professor at Faculty of Technical and Vocational Education, UTHM. Please welcome Dr. Doria to lead this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Chaperson and Cik Wafi. Alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to all of the participants of the second day of the 8th World Conference on TVET 2022, or TVET Forum 2 session with the theme, Empowering Women, Tibet Educators' Competency in VUCA World. Today, we are very honoured to have our invited panellists. Our first panellist, TS Dr. Yusmalwati Yusuf, Senior Lecturer from the Faculty of Technical and Vocational Education, University Tun Hussein on Malaysia. How are you, TS Dr. Yusmal? Well, Alhamdulillah, I'm all fine, thank oh. you. Our second panellist, Associate Professor Dr. Yunga Kang, Professor from the Korea Polytechnic Kopo, and Yang Haseyo. All right. So our second panelist, um, the third panelist, is Professor Dr. Anna, Professor from the Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. Apa kabar, Ibu Anna? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Thank you very much for all of your commitment and time to be with us in this forum, sec, uh, the Forum 2 Work TVET 2022 with the theme Empowering Women TVET Educators Competency in VUCA World. It is my pleasure to be the moderator for today's forum. I'm Doria Islamiyah Rosli, and on behalf of the 8th Work TVET 2022 UTHM Organizing Committee, once again, we would like to extend a very warm welcome to the panelists, professors, and fellow colleagues. We really appreciate your time for being with us in this forum. We really hope that you will gain a fruitful insight and information throughout this session, inshallah. To begin this forum, uh, allow me to read a brief uh, biography of our panelists. The first panelist, T.S. Dr. Yusmawati Yusuf, is a senior lecturer in the Faculty of Technical and Vocational Education, University Tun Hussein on Malaysia. She received her PhD in Technical Education from the University of East London, United Kingdom. 
and her master's degree in education from University Technology Malaysia. She actively participated in research projects and publications, as well as consultation at national and international levels, specifically in the field of technical and vocational education and training, TVET. Her research interests include both educational and technical aspects, namely pedagogical approaches, instructional design, real-time construction and development, social development and cultural exchange, which directly focus to the indigenous people. She is also a certified skills and vocational trainer and a member of the Malaysian Board of Technologies. Interestingly, TS Dr. Yusmawati also an active leader for the Girls Guide Association Malaysia. Now for our second panelist, Associate Professor Dr. Yunga Kang. Associate Professor Dr. Yunga Kang is the Director of Industry and Academia Collaboration Office at the Korea Polytechnic Skopo. She also is the President for the Liberal Arts Association and an English Professor at Kopo. As a professor, um, Dr. Kang on her doctoral study in English linguistics from Chungnam National University, Daejeon, Korea, or her master's degree in English linguistics from South Dakota State University, Brookings, United, United States of America. Her research interests was largely related to the TVET education training and technology usage in teaching and learning. She has published a book entitled Essential on the Job English for Global Technicians. And finally, our third uh, panelist is as a professor, Dr. Anna. She is currently the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Vocational and Technology Education, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, UP, Bandung, Indonesia. She holds several positions such as Head of Child and Elderly Service Laboratory of Home Economics, Head of Entrepreneurship, LPPM UP, Research Counselor and as well as Lecturer in the Home Economic Department UP. She owned her doctoral study in technology and vocational education from the Universitas Negeri Yogyakarta and her master's degree was also from the same university. Her research, generally in the area of education, related to the usage of technology as a teaching and learning tools. TVET skills and performance in teaching and learning and also TVET program academic development. She also actively published in education related topics in journals, books, technical uh, report and UP teaching and learning guidelines. All right, so now we try to move on on round one. For your information, the forum session will be divided into two rounds and the pan panelists are required to share their points and ideas during the forum session. Perhaps most of us wonder when we really use the VUCA acronym, yeah? So the United States Army War College was one of the first organizations to use the VUCA acronym following the 11 September and terrorist attack in 2001-2008 world finance uh, crisis. And most recent one is the conflict to uh, 2019 conf, um, COVID pandemic, which have increased the sense of scared, anger, danger, and unpredictable situations. These situations describe the VUCA, which its acronym stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, and amb ambiguous. In one of the books by jo uh, Bob Johansson published in 2009 in entitled Leaders Make the Future, mentioning that the turbulent and unpredictable future situations could affect the organizations. So therefore, as the women of the world today needs new skills and approaches to manage in the four VUCA threats. I believe some of our country partners, perhaps Malaysia, Korea, Indonesia, have a comprehensive initiatives and also strategic planning to empower women, TVET educators' competency in VUCA world. So perhaps TS Dr. Yusmawati can share with us today on what are the initiatives and strategic planning to empower women, 
TVET educators' competency in VUCA world, especially in the context of Malaysia. I hand over to you, TS Dr. Yusma. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Doria. Assalam, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning and greeting everyone. When, when reflected the woman educator, the first thing come to mind is beauty with a brain. And when focusing on that TVET educators, what come to my mind is something about the, we need to be bold, progressive, and aggressive. Well, it's, it's thinking of how we need to, uh, meaning that when we talk about the TVET, technical and vocational education and training is an important part of the educational system with the aim of developing skilled workers for a country, meaning that the institution, we are as the lecturers in university, polytechnic or colleges, our main purpose is to, to train students for future workforce. And this is meaning that we need to train the student properly to make sure they are able to get work after their graduation. And with this, we need to have specific competency to help the students. And before we help the students, meaning that we need to help ourselves first. Okay, when talking about educators' competency, I might reflect the most common competency that needed among the educators, which are the knowledge, the skill, and the attitude. Well, actually, our keynote speaker just now already mentioned about this, but maybe I just reflect to my own direction, my own way as a mere lecturer, okay? Because this is also reflect from the previous sharing from one of the lecturers, TVET lecturers from China, saying that TVET educators actually is quite hardly to find out Tibet educators who are competent both theoretical and practical skills. So in discussing about this question, I just reflect to myself as a mere a lecturer. I mean, okay, the first, the knowledge, and because we are the educators and our main task is to deliver the knowledge and information to the students so that we need to be the content experts. Even I might say that nowadays, we are no longer solely the for knowledge provided, students can get information in many forms from many sources out there, but at least our expertise can help to ensure the reliability and validity of the sources of the information gathered by the students. Okay, in this content, I would like to mention knowledge, I will divide into three aspects, which is the content knowledge, the pedagogical knowledge, and also the technical practical or, or practical knowledge. When it's about the content knowledge, it is a uh, understand on the subject matter, meaning when we're going to teach, we need to understand what we are going to teach, okay? For example, I'm teaching in building construction. In all day, maybe but drawing is just using the T square, the T, t uh, the set square, or even the T board. Who are the technical teacher? Maybe you know what I mean about this. But nowadays, it's hardly to find out those equipment because nowadays, drawing is focusing more on using the computer with the specific software such as the AutoCAD, the BIM, the Revit, and so many design that, that use online or, or with specific software. So for that reason, I need to enhance my knowledge to know what exactly all these things to make sure I can deliver very well to the, my students. And besides just the pedagogical knowledge is how to pull from the teaching. For example, during the COVID-19, just last time, all learning institutions are closed and then they, we cannot teach face to face. And as a result, online learning has become the choice for teaching and learning sessions. So we need to explore the digital literacy to understand how to find out information, how, how to share the uh, teaching materials and everything. And I'm I'm not that young. I might say it's quite difficult for me to learn about digital literacy. But then what we need to understand, we need to know how to use it to make sure that teaching can take place in whatever situation so that, can we, so that we can disseminate sufficiently the knowledge to the students with using the new technology. Even after the pandemic, I might say that uh, de-digitalization, digital, de blended learning and online learning have become the cash price in the education institution. Even now, now we are using the virtual online uh, forum instead of face-to-face, -face, meaning that we already comfort or uh, 
for uh, convenience with this uh, style of uh, life with the digital era. Again, we need to always to take out the knowledge and the new information because it's not only the teaching purpose but also to improvise the current curriculum and the program with that we need also to have the practical knowledge meaning that we using our professional expertise to generate something to uh, improvise our curriculum for example uh, the current trend is focusing on the IR 4.0 and maybe teaching is no longer take place in the classroom, maybe in the industry, which actually has already happened now. So we need to have the knowledge to expert, maybe to design the suitable curriculum and uh, the relevant uh, program to suit the current demand. And this is also to reflect our knowledge about the tools, machine and equipment. When we talk about the practical or technical uh, knowledge, meaning that we know, understand what to use, how to use, and before you deliver the teaching to the student, before you give the information to the students. So there's a three knowledge that I like, I have mentioned is about the uh, knowledge, the content knowledge, the, the pedagogical knowledge, and also as well as the technical knowledge. And one strategy that might help us to improve our knowledge, I might say is uh, through the research activity. Uh, because besides learning and gain knowledge, we might produce a new knowledge as well. And doing research is seen can help us to explore new knowledge. It's only uh, not the new knowledge, but produce the new knowledge from what we have done and it's also at the end of the day we need we will contribute to the new idea to the new knowledge and it's also be, the research itself may help us to become more creative innovative and become a critical thinking this is another another competency that we need to obtain and at the end of the day we can share the findings the result who can benefit others so the the finding we can share to the publication through the conference presentation or exhibition or competition and this is also uh, expose us to others and can get a network with others so i mean that is how the knowledge can be gained can be shared can be disseminated uh, through the research uh, project so as a teacher besides teaching we do need to make some research as well to make sure our, our knowledge is not rusted because the, the technology is very fast moving so we need to really catch the technology it was usually left behind but at least we know something what happened in the current situation so research i might say is a uh, quite uh, important even i'm not really fancy about the, the, the research because it's quite hard work and sometimes it's lots of work but then at the end of the day i might to admit it is really help me in certain competency and I kind of enjoy doing the research. Okay, and because I can meet lots of people. Okay, that's about the knowledge and how we can improvise the knowledge. And the second competency is skill. So in the integration and knowledge, if and skill is necessary for the based education system. So the skill I can divide into three, the teaching skill, the hard skill, and soft skill. So the teaching skill, we refer to pedagogical skills. And all day we say about the pedagogy, but now we do have the cybergogy, heterogogy, peergogy, and ever, even andragogy, and so many about that, that teaching, that uh, skill that is changed with the change of the technology. Okay, we cannot just now rely on the chalk and talk, but now we need to use more on the technology. Okay, back to come the pandemic, COVID-19. Okay, we need to use online platform. And then yes or no, you like it or not like it, you need to understand and able to use a platform such as uh, Google Meet, Zoom, Teams, and all those platform too teaching this is what we did now and then as well we need to understand how to use the learning management system how to share the material how to conduct exam test assessment using the uh, online platform so it's things that we need to dig out and and then make is competent to use all those things even it's hard but what we can say we need to adapt and adopt all those things to make sure you are have that specific to and then to uh, 
do it with the students to make sure that we can deliver the teaching very well. Even in nowadays, I mean, we already use the computer, but we save uh, the information using the, the diskette, if you still remember how, what is diskette, and then turn to the thumb drive. But now we no longer using that, that things, right? No, nowadays we store our files, we save our files in the cloud storage such, such as Google Drive, and then we have OneDrive and, and many others online storage. So this is how the uh, skill changes and at the same time it's also reflect to us as a teacher, we need to have a skill that is relevant to the current needs and the current trend of the learning situation. And also nowadays we are going towards the industrial revolution 4.0 and it's led to the shift of the conventional learning paradigm towards technology-based learning. So we need to explore the new era of teaching that adopt high technology in so we just kind of starting to dig out into information and start to uh, enhance our skill do, do good, using that, that all those uh, I mean technology uh, is kind of hard but what to say we need to be at least become uh, adapt the modernization of the, uh, the world change and did we need to change as well. If not, our knowledge is trusted, our skill is trusted, and then we're going to be rusted as well. Nowhere to go, okay? And then we need to, to adapt all these things to our teaching, and then that's why we need to become a skillful. And the thirdly is the hard skill, which is meaning that we are competent in handling the machine, the equipment, and tool as well as the technology application, meaning that we can uh, a skill to perform specific duty or tasks, such as for my uh, background, I am civil engineering, so I need to know how to lay the bricks, mix the concrete, even to to uh, fix the tile and etc. etc. That's that's a reflect to how to build the building. I need to make my hands dirty. So I need to have that specific skill. So in term this specific skill, I might like to share the initiative or the strategies that have been done in our faculty. Uh, I'm also happy to, to let you know that our faculty and our university is the only one university that have a skill certified center, meaning that we are entitled to trained students for specific skills. And in this scenario for our faculty, the Faculty of Technical and Vocational Education, we have six uh, certified skill centers for six programs, I meaning that's for six programs. And coming soon, we're going to have another four skill centers. So the skill centers is train the student in the specific a competency. For example, for my area, I am civil engineering, so the skill that need to pose by the student is the is, um, building constructor skill. And in our university as well, we have a specific vocation teaching skills, what we call as vocational training uh, skill. And the major lecturer in our faculty have a Malaysian skill certificate, uh, at least at level two. And also they have a certificate for vocational training. The, the certificate um, up to level five, but majority at the faculty we have uh, at level two, which is 45 staffs and 38 staff who hold the certificate at level three and also staff at the level four and level five, and we have a risk vocational training officer for 31 staff and vocational training executive, 20 staff, and also the vocational training manager is 16 staff. And for myself, I have also a skills, Malaysia skills certificate for building constructor at level three, and I am also the training, a vocational training manager. So meaning that I am actually able to, to open the skill center 
but not yet for the moment. I just use my, my competency to teach the students. And I may say that, that uh, this is the specific uh, competency that means, uh, we need to explore and we need to be competent. This is the strategies that have been uh, conducted uh, in apply in our faculty and meaning that whoever you are, you need to have that because at the end of the day, the student will also have this skill. Besides the bachelor degree, they will also have Malaysia certificate skill. That's why we need to have competency as well to make sure the student can get the proper training to produce the very good skill. And but this program we embed in the, the current syllabus is not that the other program we just embed and then uh, the current syllabus with the existing syllabus. Okay, then and I might I might say that that actually the the skill that we have is not different from the men. What men do we can do as well actually. Uh, even my 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 uh, programs we have more women than the men, and I can see that. Yes, women can do what men can do. It's no different, actually. So that is about the, the hard skill. And the finally, is about the soft skill, meaning that is the characteristic and personal qualities of, of the TVET teachers. This is in, including the, how we control our emotion, our flexibility, our humanity, openness, risk-taking, and the team player are how we can uh, comfort and pamper our students because we are a, a role model to the students. So we need to know how to handle the students to make sure they can easily share their, their uh, problem or anything about us. So, and at, the, at least with this, the soft skill, we can uh, get close to the students. So easy to, to us to understand about the students. So the strategy that can be used to explore or, or to enhance this skill is through the training, through the course, to the workshop, and for the upskilling, for the reskilling, is that whether in house training or outside from the campus, and then there's the how can we can can I mean enhance and and also can improve our skill. That is the strategy that that usually I mean it's not in our university only. I believe in any anywhere they do have uh, some training to enhance uh, their stuff. It doesn't matter is that women or men usually we have equal uh, opportunity i might say all right and the final competency is it attitude meaning that in here i like to express about the attitude toward yourself i mean toward ourselves to the organization and attitude toward the society to the community and if you focus on toward Attitude toward ourselves, eh? yourself, ourselves, meaning that you need to love yourself first, prop to be yourself. And as a Muslim and anybody who believes in religion, you need to trust about only the religion, love, caring, patient with something, and patient with everything, resilient, active, healthy, make sure we are healthy, we can uh, be better and be healthy, active, we need to have. Uh, very good health situation. And then we need to be sincere, knowledgeable, fair, uh, considerate, um, and at the same time to improve our interpersonal and intrapersonal skills as well. That is attitude towards ourselves. The second is attitude towards um, organization, meaning that we need to love the organization, we need to respect our leaders, our colleagues, obey to the rule and the regulation, the integrity, we need to be proactive, creative, innovative, efficient, and punctual, um, both form whatever task give very well, spirit of teamwork. This is how we show our love, our, our uh, attitude towards the organization. And the last is about attitude towards the society, the community, because teacher, we are considered as a social agent as well. So this is considered 
uh, as a social skill, meaning that how we engage with the community, with the society surrounding us, even outside of the campus, because it's quite different, uh, the community in the campus and outside of the campus. So we do need this social skill to make sure we can, uh, it's not being good as a teacher, but also as a human in this uh, country. Uh, so it's kind of, you need to be harmony in the society, no violence, no no viral, uh, that's the things now. We are very famous about viral. So make sure you are not involved in that kind of thing. And then we need to have the community spirit, uh, of spirit of patriotism to show our love to our country. And of course, it's not only to the human, to the country, also to the environment. We need to uh, love our environment as well, save our environment. Just like what uh, uh, Prof. Margarita said just now, uh, the greed thing. So meaning that we need to make sure our environment is always green and, and work toward that greening environment. Okay, so on enhance or, or, or provide this, uh, the, the attitude, what we can do is uh, through the CSR program, through the consultation program, even uh, supervision and administration tasks, because all these uh, CSR uh, consultation will allow us to involve engage with the community, with the industry, NGOs, on, and any stakeholders, including the parents, the students. So this is how we can improve our attitudes because when we're dealing with the people, you know, people are human. Uh, human is always a complex uh, things, you know, full of complicated and, and we need to have a good attitude to handle the human, uh, to handle them with care. So that's how the attitude is, is important for us. So this is the three uh, competency that, that I, might like, uh, I might like to highlight, which is the knowledge, the, the skills, and also the attitudes. Because teachers are responsibility to transfer knowledge, attitude, and spiritual growth to balance academic maturity and connective attitudes, especially in the current technology development. Uh, I might say this is basic competency. You might be able to face whatever world in front of you. There is digitalization world, globalization world, or even the VUCA world. I mean, what you think, what you feel will lead to what you did. Because all this come to true to your hands, okay. So if we have the good knowledge, good attitude, that it will produce the best TVET teacher performance that lead to good deeds as well. So inshallah, we are ready for the volatility, uh, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity world. With that, I think that is the the uh, the sharing from me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, T.S. Uh, Dr. Yusmawati Yusuf on, on the uh, brilliant in initiatives that you have highlighted in the context of Malaysia. I can feel your excitement eh, uh, during your presentation. And please allow me to recap on the points that have been highlighted by uh, T.S. Dr. Yusma. Uh, she also mentioned about women needs to be bold and progressive in order to do that. So therefore, we need to embark on certain training session and the train future. Therefore, we also need to train future generations that meet the uh, the demands of the industries. And also, you have uh, uh, highlighted three competen uh, competency uh, skills, which is the knowledge, the skills, and also attitude, whereby you have, uh, you know, explain it uh, very deeply, meaningfully, and also give us some example, for example, involved in the research activities. Um, and then also uh, back in your home country, you also embark on skill certification, which is very interesting, embedded into the uh, academic program, provide upskilling and reskilling training, perhaps we can organize in the future, and also um, uh, and also involve yeah, with the consultation and also community services. All right, thank you very much, uh, TS Dr. Yusma. Now, how about um, in the context of Korea? So what and how would Korea empower women to educate educators' competency in the VUCA world? Please welcome Associate Professor Dr. Yunga Kang. Thank you very much, moderator. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank UTHM and all the organizers for this World Conference. 
I'm very honored to be invited as a panel for the forum. Uh, as the moderator just uh, introduced me, I have taught English at Korea Polytechnic since 2013. Among the programs I designed and taught, there were courses for career-interrupted women who wanted to re-enter society. They became an opportunity for me to become interested in women's issues in Tibet in Korea. Uh, for the questions, uh, I want to talk about what Korean government and Tibet institution and organizations uh, have done to help Tibet educators uh, to improve their competencies and knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Uh, in response to the question topics of this forum, I researched government policies and studies on women education in Tibet, but there were just a few. However, considering that most vocational training fields are science and engineering, there are legislations for women in science and engineering fields, several public institutions related to women in science and engineering and technology, and policies and programs for women scientists. I will briefly introduce government support policies for women scientists and engineers in Korea. The government first established the basic plan for fostering and supporting women scientists and engineers in 2004, which sets mid and long term policy goals and directions at the national level for fostering and supporting women scientists and engineers. According to this plan, uh, established every five years, the government has implemented various support projects for women scientists and engineers. Beginning in 2004, the period from 2019 to 2023 corresponds to the fourth basic plan. The plan has four, uh, three main strategic follow-up tasks. First, strategically recruit women human resources and expand opportunities to experience new industry-related fields to develop their capabilities. Second, enhance global competency through overseas training support for young women scientists and engineers. Third, expand career development and connections for sustainable growth as scientists and engineers. Based on the plan, the Korean government founded the WIZAD, which is called Korea Foundation for Women in Science and Engineering and Technology in 2011 to support policies for women science and technology human resources. As an organization dedicated to women in science and technology, it has provided education, mentoring, research, and job support programs to expand the influx of women in science and engineering and career growth in their lives. Through WIZAT, women vocational training teachers can obtain information on new technologies and industries and receive continuous education on new technologies and new theories needed through workshops and seminars. Since 2010, the fourth industrial revolution and artificial intelligence have led the digital transformation of industries and rapid changes in everyday life. In the two to three years, information technology has developed by leaps and bounds, and the demand for non-face-to-face -face and online training has exploded due to the pandemic of COVID-19 virus. In particular, the field of vocational education and training is an area that is greatly affected by industrial changes and changes in the education and training environment. Furthermore, the advent of artificial intelligence provides a new frontier of exploration to push the boundaries of what is possible in educating the next generation. All Tibet education and training teachers must adapt to the rapidly changing educational environment of the VUCA era and have the necessary skills. 
In the Industry 4.0 era, the digital transformation of the world have created gaps in new knowledge and new skills that need to be filled by the workforce and the teachers who train them. Tibet institutions and leaders now should invest in teacher development through programmatic initiatives focusing on preparing Tibet teaching staff for the digital era. So I will briefly introduce uh, COPO from now on. COPO has been the largest Tibet under the control of the Ministry of Employment and Labor since 1968. It has offered training courses in castings, molds, welding, thermal processing, surface treatment process, and also the new technology fields such as AI, information technology, and data analysis. COPO has 40 campuses nationwide with 1,055 teaching faculty members. It offers two types of program, uh, programs, degree programs and non-degree programs. A one-year non-degree vocational training program is all state sponsored. Among 1,055 fac faculty members are 198 women Tibet professors and teachers making up only 18% of the faculty. The number also shows the gender gap in employment rate in Korea and also at COPO. COPO has operated three training centers for its teaching faculty members, new technology education and training center, and then metaverse research and training center, and lastly, teaching and coaching training center. A new technology education and training center with excellent professors and the latest equipment provides two types of training programs, center and non-center programs. Center programs provide professors and instructors of COPO with high-tech courses for their competency enhancement in the new fields, and at the same time in teaching and training the students and the trainees. For non-center programs, professors personally contact companies or industry fields experts to request the opening of education and training courses so that they can attend to experience and learn new technologies they are interested in or are related to uh, during vacations. The center provides professional competency training programs in new technologies such as information security, artificial intelligence, and big data all year round. One aspect of the center program has been to implement training programs for Tibet teaching staff in digitization. These programs are implemented in close cooperation with IT companies in private sectors who are involved in both curriculum development and training Tibet teaching staff. The training is aimed at developing teachers' practical, technical, and didactic skills, as well as their capacity to use digital learning tools. To prepare a future vocational education and training system for the digital tra transition period for the first time in Korea, COPO opened the Metaverse Research and Training Center and are building a digital vocational education platform based on lifelong vocational competency development. It built a virtual campus using its own Metaverse platform and produced immersed augmented reality and virtual reality educational contents specialized for vocational education. Users of the Polytechnic, uh, Polytech uh, Metaverse platform can experience expanded learning activities by supplementing the disadvantages of technical education and training that are difficult to experience due to problems such as high cost and high risk, such as practice dis disassembling electric vehicles and adding a sense of reality. The most significant advantage of the metaverse in education and learning 
is its ability to provide the necessary subject matter in an enhanced and incorporated manner. Tibet educators uh, learn what the metaverse is, its components, and its application in the education field. The center uh, will provide courses of 5G, AI, VR, AR, digital twins, blockchains, holography, or IoT, so that the teachers, uh, Tibet teachers, can match pace with the rapidly evolving technological sphere in education. In addition to technical training, the teaching and coaching training center provides leadership capacity building training. That's just only for women professors twice a year. Uh, in line with the women workforce development policy, COPO has conducted women leadership training to strengthen the role of a change facilitator and women leader who leads organization change. The contents of the program include the paradigm shift for women leadership in the era, uh, era, of, era of VUCA, and then sharing the know-how of working women to overcome reality, and then effects of occupational philosophies and beliefs on organizational performance, and the features that a leader must have, and a change in the perception of women. Why is women leadership on the rise? And how to strengthen one's strengths and compensate for one's weakness. And then lastly, how to communicate strategically with organizational members. By providing all these training programs to strengthen teachers' capabilities in new technology fields and leadership capabilities, COPO will continue to implement government policies for women. Those women Tibet teachers may demonstrate their roles and competencies within the organization with their improved self-esteem and competencies in this few words. And that's all for my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, SS Professor Dr. Yunga Kang, um, for the well planned framework uh, to empower women Tibet educators' competency in Korea. I bet it will take a strong determination and also worth an effort uh, to make all the initiatives a reality. And allow me to recap again, once again, on the points that have been highlighted by Dr. Uh, Associate Professor Dr. Yunga Kang. Um, she actually mentioned about the government, uh, Korean government, give support in terms of the policies for women uh, science. Uh, women scientists and also engineers in Korea, recruiting women in the human resources and also enhance global competency through overseas training, very interesting. And also there's a lots of program have embarked in Korea. Uh, for example, we have Reset Korea Foundation for Women in Science and Engineering Technologies, upskilling and also teaching development, which focusing on the transformation of digital era. So interestingly, COPO, uh, with the lead by uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Kang, have actively contributed to the achievement of the all of the initiatives laid out eh, by the Korean government. Uh, all the best and congratulate uh, for you for the effort. And also, um, they at the moment uh, focus into developing the virtual campus, which is very interesting, where they um, they are trying to develop develop the virtual uh, campus using the metaverse platform, uh, focusing on the technical and vocational training. Well done, uh, uh, Dr. Kang and the team. And uh, now how about our nearby country partners, uh, Indonesia, with more than 250 millions of population spread out to the 17,000 islands eh, all around the world that are uh, what are the initiatives or strategic planning that has been or will be adopted by Indonesia to empower women Tibet educators' competency in the VUCA world? I hand over to you, SS Professor Dr. Ena. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, moderator, for opportunity. I'm very happy to be here. Thanks to UTHM for holding a very interesting conference 
also thanks to all committee. Uh, allow me to share about what are the initiative or strategy to empower uh, women uh, TFET educator competency in FUCA world in Indonesia context. Interesting what uh, was done by each previous country, uh, Malaysia, South Korea, that has been explained by previous uh, speakers. At the beginning of our discussion, I would like to uh, briefly describe the current population of Indonesia. In Indonesia, June 2022, the Indonesia Minister of Home Affairs released that the latest data on the Indonesian population. Indonesian population is um, currently dominated by the productive age population, and then uh, composition of male is 50.5%. Uh, while female is 49.5%. Uh, uh, Meanwhile, the level of participation of Indonesia women in the world of work is still uh, considered low. However, from its growth in uh, the last three years, uh, the number of uh, women work participation has consistently increased compared to men's work uh, participation. In 20 20 uh, the work participation rate for Indonesia Indonesian men has slightly uh, decreased compared to, to any, uh, 2019 while the work participation rate for Indonesian women has increased uh, this condition is a due uh, to large number of male workers in both the formal and informal sectors who have experienced uh, layoffs due to companies affected by the COVID pandemic. During the COVID pandemic and also in Malaysia, right, in Korea, many micro, small uh, and medium scale business were developed uh, by women from home to have uh, the family economy so that the level of women's work participation increased even though it was hit by uh, the COVID pandemic. Uh, it's about gender inequality in Indonesia. According to data released uh, by the World Economic Forum, the Global Gender Gap Report for 2022, Indonesia generally uh, gets a gender inequality index score of uh, 0 0.67, uh, ranking 92 out of uh, 146 countries. This ranking has increased from 2021 which is uh, still rank 101. This gender inequality of index is based on four dimensions, namely education, health and survival, uh, economic participation and opportunity, and political empowerment. In detail, the score for the education dimension in Indonesia is a one uh, is a 0 0.972 points. This is all score so that uh, gender uh, equality in the Indonesia education sector is balanced. Indonesia health and survival dimension has a score of uh, 0 0.970 points. This score also shows uh, gender balance. While the economic dimension in Indonesia has score of uh, 0 0.674 points, this is condition show that Indonesia economic sector is uh, almost equal between genders. Finally, the dimension of political empowerment in Indonesia is only a 0 0.169 at the lowest. On the political dimension, what is most uh, highlight uh, is not is an, uh, is uh, the non fulfillment of the 30% uh, uh, quota for women involvement in politics. The most involvement of women in government was during. Uh, the 2014-2019 a government period is many as a nine women entered the cabinet. According to my understanding, there are some things that women must prepare uh, to face a future condition. Uh, based on the result of study, and there are at least uh, three demand faced uh, by women in future condition, um, especially in Indonesia. The first, the demand for leadership. Uh, previous uh, keynote speaker uh, mentioned before, Dr. Afero's leadership is important for anticipating every event that may occur, planning for the future, and uh, uh, pushing yourself 
and others to do the be their best. Uh, in an effort to improve leadership aspect, several competencies are needed, including uh, independence, cognitive competencies such as mastery general knowledge, uh, maybe Dr. Hughes uh, mentioned before, theory and co concept, functional competencies such as problem solving in everyday life, personality competencies and social competencies. Second, the demand for entrepreneurship. I think a uh, keynote speaker before mentioned this entrepreneurial ability requires creativity and innovation as an effort to survive the sieve uh, caused by the few coward. Uh, character character uh, building programs need uh, to be optimized the new existing uh, entrepreneurial abilities. At a minimum, an individual must have the intention to encourage the achievement of the desired goals, improve performance, support new mindset and action. The third is the ability to use uh, digital technology. I think it's, uh, we will learn uh, practice from uh, South Korea. Digital technology training and education is needed to minimize the disparities uh, that occur in urban and rural areas. Optimizing of communication technology in particular facilitate access. The Indonesia Minister of Education is currently encouraging many institutions to develop online education programs that uh, prioritize uh, certification and skill acquisition. Uh, thus uh, providing many choices of opportunities for the public uh, to be able uh, to access education or courses as an effort to meet uh, labor market demands, especially for women and people with disabilities. Based on FUCA demands for women defense educators, the strategy for increase or empowering the competency of Indonesia defense educators in the FUCA era, I will convey a sixth aspect related to strategy that might uh, be a driving force uh, for women empowerment. The first is uh, the increase in skilled and educated manpower. The problem of the number of teachers uh, with relevant qualification and work experience uh, is an old problem in TFET that, is, that still uh, persists today. It is necessary to adjust or update the national accreditation system with focus on increasing the relevance uh, between the world of education and the needs of the workforce and the characterized uh, characteristic of the needs of the uh, workforce namely special jobs such as technical competency and managerial jobs second the use of technology different educators uh, must be fully engaged uh, with information and communication technology the adoption of uh, this technology requires an open mind and receptive attitude so teacher must adopt a lifelong learner attitude. The third is a problem solving. It's very important. Problem, skill, uh, problem solving skill can help different educators see the bigger and wider picture. And individual, individual will gain uh, knowledge about himself, which is not easy to obtain and is usually obtained from the process of interaction with other people. Fourth is critical thinking. This critical thinking ability merge from the problem solving process uh, where our process uh, of, of finding solution and the process of considering various alternatives uh, uh, can encourage the honing of one's critical thinking skills in the process the critical thinking is developed from the process of recognition uh, creation and knowledge the fifth is increased emotional intelligence. One of these emotional intelligence is the ability to communicate. This still is very important for Tibet educators to pose as a self strength in order to be able to influence uh, and convince uh, students. The last is organizational, uh, organizational uh, service. Services oriented uh, needs uh, to be continuously realize in the line with change changes in the target object uh, of the uh, advertisers namely the development of change in a character and needs of a students 
in its orientation, there are several aspects uh, that need to be uh, presented, namely visionary to increase direction in creation by utilizing the diversity around it, uh, understanding to take advance of environment, environmental changes uh, during to find alternative solution to problems and adaptable to adapt and respond quickly to the change that have occurred. I think that is my opinion about uh, the strategy must uh, be prepared to support women empowerment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, SSO Professor Dr. Dr. Anna. Lots of interesting strategies and uh, initiatives um, that will be implement implemented and also have been implemented in Indonesia. And uh, we really hope that all of the initiatives carried out will give a meaningful impact to the community, especially for um, the community back in Indonesia. And uh, allow me to highlight as well uh, several points that have been mentioned by uh, SS Professor Dr. Anna. Interesting, interestingly, lots of lots of um, you know percentages and uh, also um, data that has been uh, highlighted just now, whereby uh, most of the uh, working participation back in Indonesia, uh, almost there. The female, uh, the female community are almost there for about 49 percent. Uh, so I ha um, I bet uh, the pandemic situation actually encouraged the women to get involved with the uh, with the participation of work uh, back in Indonesia. And also, um, Indonesia have strongly encouraged in the small industry and medium uh, training uh, to improve. Uh, uh, the economic, uh, social economic in uh, Indonesia, especially for women, and also empowering women uh, in VOCA world, whereby uh, embarking on several uh, training session for Tibet educators, which highlight uh, on the skills which is uh, the uh, meet the requirement of the future work job. For example, um, critical thinking kind of skills, digital skills, emotional intelligence skills. Uh, and also organizational services. Very interesting, right? So now we are actually in round two. Back again to you, uh, TS, uh, Dr. Yusmawati. I believe you as the an active girl guide eh, of Malaysia leaders and also researcher that mainly focus on the rural, rural women community. Perhaps you, uh, you as the Tibet educators wanted to share best practices or activities um, in order to accelerate the process of uh, empowering women agenda towards global development in Malaysia. What is your take for this, TS Dr. Yumas Yusmawati? Please welcome. All right, thank you, Dr. Doria. <clears throat> thank you again. Well, well be before I, I focus for what I have done, maybe I need I need to, to explain uh, from the, the, the international lab for first what what the because the empowering a uh, woman actually is not a, a local uh, agenda but it's a global agenda actually so m maybe I, I'd like to start at the international level first and then could go to the national to the states and then then we talk about that uh, what have I've done with the rural communities and and with the go guy association uh, is that okay dr Dara yeah I will start with that, that what have been uh, proposed at the international levels first. So uh, to empower women, actually, there are many agenda. Um, so as well as just explain this now, I'm going to focus at the international level, the national level, and then uh, at the community level. At the international level, there is a women's empowerment principles which has been launched in 2010 by the United Nations Women and the United Nations Global Impact. And actually, empowering women also have been stake in the sustainability development goal, particularly uh, in SDG 5, which is on the gender equality and women's empowerment. So that Anna has also mentioned about uh, gender uh, distribution in their country and also focus on women leadership. Uh, this is also an agenda in the world to make sure that, that um, women is comprehensive and, and, and at par, same level with the male uh, gender. 
Okay, I might highlight a few. I mean, just like to, to tell maybe everybody knows about that about this principle maybe but i just like to share actually this woman empowerment empowerment principle focus on seven principle and actually to foster business practice that empower women but i might say it can be applied for any woman in any organization in any industry so the first principle is to establish high level corporate leadership just what uh, dr kang say just now a leadership program and the second principle is to treat all women and men fairly at workplace so there's no bias no discrimination that's the second principle the third principle to ensure the health safety and well-being of all women and also the men actually. And the fourth principle is to promote education, training and professional development for the woman. This has been done, uh, mentioned by Dr. Anand just now, how uh, the country do to, end, to educate the, uh, the, the woman. And the fifth is about implement enterprise development, supply chain and marketing practice that empower women and the sex is to promote equality through community services and advocacy and the last is to measure and uh, report on the progress to achieve gender equality so mainly the principle is to make sure that that there is no bias no gender no discrimination among the women that is that the international level and when focusing at the national level i mean in the malaysia there is a specific uh, ministry that focusing on women who is the ministry of women family and community development so the main vision of this ministry to achieve the gender equality family on and community development. And it's also to generate the perspective of women and society into the mainstream national development and strengthen the family institution towards improving social welfare. So uh, uh, ministry has proposed the Dasar Wanita Negara, uh, there's the national women's policy. The national Women's policy is a guide and direction in the planning and implementation of women's development based on the awareness that women is also part of the country. They also contribute uh, to the country developments. And the goal is to increase and strengthen the fair and equitable partnership between women and men in all aspects of life. And also to strengthen the institution of family and develop the community and society. So that is that, that, that at the national level. And besides that, they also we have uh, to improve income of the women. There's substantial budget that has been allocated by the government, uh, such as uh, they have provide some amount of money to some specific foundation to conduct women's uh, program and women entrepreneurship program. This is to actually to um, help the students, uh, help the women who are going to improve their social uh, and economic it's also uh, they can have a place where they can uh, have a financial support such as from the bank and also from certain agency where they can get a fund to help them to to improve yourself and besides there's also there's a ministry of rural development who also provide skill, uh, free skill enhancement to women, uh, such as a short-term training course uh, for cooking, especially for women, uh, sewing and maybe decorative handicraft, and specifically for women. There are also Malaysia Skills Certificate for the full-time program, and also a Malaysia Skills, skills uh, Certificate through the recognition of prior achievement, meaning that the, the, the women, they may no longer like to uh, learn in a proper learning institution, so they may, might use their prior experience to uh, recognize it as a certificate, proper certificate. And finally, it's also a short-term skill that has an immediate impact on participant uh, that Candle by the local uh, uh, agencies such as the Kemas. Kemas is uh, the the place where the women usually mothers uh, gather to do something and, and to get training to get uh, info and that's uh, what have been done at the national uh, level. So 
that is, uh, and then come to the state levels, I might just refer to our uh, Johor, we are in Johor now. So there's specific agencies that also focus on women for improve their social economic, usually to help they in increase their uh, income or gain extra income to help the family to uh, have a good proper life, meaning that uh, because this is really focused on the uh, vulnerable women that are at the rural area, this is what the state do. And for example, in the Joko, we have the Yayasan Pembangunan Keluarga Daru Takzib. This is a foundation for family development. So among the objective is yes to accelerate women into the mainstream of the development. And every district in Joko also has this foundation. Uh, and they have lots of program giving a support a fund to help the woman. So whoever woman need fund or need equipment to start in their business, for example. So this foundation will help them to start kicking off to get some uh, information, some training to help them gain extra or gain more, uh, improve their social life, economic. And then besides that, we also have agencies and NGO who also conduct uh, many programs in Empower Women. For example, we have uh, Usahanita, which is in all states. We have Usahanita in all states in Malaysia, which is focusing on women in entrepreneurship. And then we have Ibu Preneur. It's also a social enterprise that functions as a platform for employment uh, for the mother who stay at home to generate sustainable income. We have a woman of field. This is an NGO that aims to transform the life of economical vulnerable women it's in Malaysia, specifically B40 women to achieve a financial. And also uh, besides that fund, we also have people who focus on the uh, woman that has been uh, through the violence, such as the Good Shepherd service, is a marginalized woman and girls, especially uh, those who went through sexual and gender-based violence, and also women of, for refugee. This is non-profit that, that seek to empower and upskill refugee women from a community that through literacy and capacity building programs. So there's actually uh, many, many uh, programs in the states that has been conducted by specific agency to empower women to make sure they are not left behind in their development. And uh, when we talk about the uh, community level, I might reflect to what my teams and I have done. So we are focusing usually uh, among the indigenous people. So I might reflect the one project that we have done, we are focusing uh, on uh, these indigenous people who are actually uh, have a bad impact during the pandemic because actually they have a talent in, in a craft and art performance. And then this product become the things that to generate the income. But unfortunately, during the pandemic, uh, they can't sell anything because they can go outside and people cannot come to their areas. So they have no uh, other ways to, to generate income, they stay in home. So with that uh, um, scenario, we try to get into to them and train and teach them about the digital entrepreneur. So what we have done is just uh, give awareness, exposure, and then information and training, and then we retain and maintain. What we did uh, first, we ask them, what do they have? They need to understand what is their strength, what is their weakness. So we, they do have the products to sell. So what, when, what can we do? We need to expose them to specific skill to make sure they can promote sales and uh, product. their product can be sold. And then... We train them to make sure they can apply what we have trained. So for this example, we train them how to uh, develop the websites and then how to advertise their product, how to promote their product, and finally how to sell the products. So when they have gained all the information, gain of the skill, we just need them to retain and maintain what they have with the uh, coaching, with the monitoring and until they can become independent. Usually these, these indigenous people, they are very dependent people. They are relied so too much relied to other people as well. So with this uh, strategy, 
uh, we make them more independent so they can sail on their own. And the best part is because they become the reference to other group as well, meaning that they can transfer the knowledge that they have, they can transfer the skill that they have to others community as well. That is, I think, is best part of them. So in this case, meaning that mean we make them more resilient and be visible. Uh, that's what we have, what we are doing. Uh, meaning that they have a, 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 a belief in their self as well that they can do to help their self. And that's about the women and uh, because I am also a leader for the girl guys. What we did actually is we are not empowering women, but we are empowering girl. Meaning that we empower at the early age. So what we did the first is about, I mean, uh, make sure the girls are about themselves. They love themselves. Okay. And, mm. and be confident. That's among the, the things that we did about the empowering girl. Because, you know, uh, that's kind of... Uh, Girls is, uh, I mean, that is uh, what we say is a transition uh, age. So many conflicts in their life. So this is how we make sure they know where they're going to go. Who are they? What do they have? So that can uh, help them to be better person in the future. So among the problems, that is a, a free being me, meaning that be yourself. Okay, don't bother whatever it says about you. And the second is also we uh, uh, teach them how to protect themselves. Huh? This is a, a program under the Stop the Violence, meaning that they know what is uh, some of some things that can be uh, faced by, by them, like a sexual harassment, abusement. So they know they we about this one, so they know how to protect themselves for from all this, this kind of, of uh, violence. And because the girls, they love gadget, they love internet to surf online and everything. We also uh, instill uh, ethics in using the computer in, in self the information from the internet, where we call it as self smart. So they know uh, to find the good sources from the internet, uh, is that a scam or is that reliable sources? So, and how not to explain Post any any confidential things in the uh, internet. So these also the things that we, we uh, instill to the girls. Meaning they will start with the girls' age rather than go for a woman. It should better idea to start with the lower age of the girls before they become the woman. Because they want to melento bulu, melento rebo, meaning that. When the bamboo, the, the bamboo should become bamboo, it's quite hard to 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 uh, shape them. So better to start with the bamboo shoot first before they become bamboo. Uh, that's why I was being a bit like the proverb says. So there's um, uh, things that maybe I might share what we have done. Uh, empowering women. It's not only empowering women, but maybe we can start from the girl's age. So when they become the woman is much more uh, easier and then they already know where is the path that they should go. Uh, I think, yes, that's all things that I want to share about what we, how we empower at the um, woman in women to make sure they are a part and, and parallel with the development, uh, which is so much, I mean, uh, Things that is exposed to many, many uh, harmful things that then is become a quite uh, worrying things, right? So uh, with this information maybe will help this woman to become a strong uh, and better uh, humankind to the global development world. Then thank you. That's only from uh, my view. Thank you very much, T.S. Dr. Yusmawati. Uh, very interesting topics that you have covered in your uh, round two, uh, whereby you try to na narrow down the scope uh, from uh, discussing about the principles of uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, you highlighted seven principle, uh, principles which, which encourage the gender equality and also the involvement of the support coming from the Ministry of Malaysia, uh, Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development, uh, 
Ministry of Rural Development, Development and also from the state uh, the state level, uh, Yayasan Pembangunan Keluarga Darul Takzim, I bet uh, might maybe uh, your team gets lots of funding uh, to run out several research eh, in regards to women empowerment. And also, um, you have also highlighted on the research that you have done where you try to help a group of uh, indigenous women community uh, to de to develop their website, especially to uh, to improve the social economic uh, uh, community, uh, packaging the product and also helping the indigenous women community. Yeah, and also interestingly, uh, in line with you as the leader for the girl guides, empowering the girls in the girl guide program, uh, initiatives from the early stages. I like that very much. Uh, in order for us to produce a bold and progressive women, so therefore uh, we need to train them uh, at the earlier stages. Yeah. So um, interesting programs that you have embarked on, se sexual harassment program, which is very important nowadays, and also ethics eh, in using the uh, ICT. All right. Well done, uh, TS Dr. Yusmawati, and also now. Uh, um, I would like to uh, call upon Associate Professor Dr. Yunga Kang as the Director of Industry and Academia Collaboration Office here at the Korea uh, Polytechnics and also the President for the Liberal Arts Association and also English Professor. Perhaps you can share the best practices and way forward strategies uh, that you have embarked on or planning for women community as to accelerate the process of uh, empowering women agenda towards global development in the context of Korea. Please welcome. Okay. Uh, I want to discuss women's empowerment through the policies and practices for career interrupted women in Korea. Uh, a job selected by individual abilities and aptitudes plays a vital role in determining an individual's social and economic life. For career interrupted women, jobs are a means of living and they also play a role in establishing an individual identity and increasing self-esteem. Women with vocational skills can enhance their employability and ability to adapt rapidly changing labor market due to the 4.0 industry revolution. TVET can make a big difference for women by improving employability. Skills and knowledge are the driving forces of economic growth and social development. The economy becomes more productive, innovative, and competitive through the existence of more skilled human potential. Women are the most vibrant and dynamic segment and potentially valuable human resource. Ahmed uh, emphasized that equipping women with knowledge, vocational skills, and skill development for employability will not only bring about development, but will be an agent of change in promoting women's empowerment. Vocationally trained women can feel the considerable gender equality gap between men and women. Thus, Korea has promoted women's participation in academic activities through the act and economic activities of career interrupted women. Since the productive population is decreasing due to the current low birth rate and increase in the aging population, Women's participation in academic activities seems essential in increasing the supply of the workforce. However, according to the Korea Economic Research Institute in 2021, women's economic activities and employment rates are still below the OECD average. Factors such as marriage, pregnancy, childbirth, childcare, and unsatisfying working conditions including gender and wage gaps, under women's economic participation. Furthermore, uh, competency development for women still needs to be improved for industrial changes and demands. Considering the result of previous studies that the increase in women's participation in economic activities 
contributes to economic development, the importance of flexible and agile women's human resource development to adapt to the rapidly changing industry in the era of the fourth industrial revolution and the prolonged COVID-19 has increased. As a public institution under the Ministry of Employment and Labor and suitable for local based industries, the case of strengthening HLD for women of COPO has a, a ripple effect on leading, systematically managing and utilizing private vocational education institutions. As a result, the input of HLD for women through public TVAD is a total of 85 courses currently open to train 1,200 people, reaching up to more than 10,000 through women's specialized degrees and non-degree courses for more than 10 years. The budget is 2.7 billion won per year, and the number of teachers and curriculum management personnel reaches 170 per year. Both degree courses and non-degree short-term courses with three to six months are designed based on the needs analysis of the industry in the region. Coding, 3D printing, after-school computer guidance, apartment facility management, cooking, clothing repair, sewing and leather craft, nursing care workers, and internet startups. The outputs showed 111% of short-term non-degree training and 59.6% of employment of the past three years, while the degree courses showed a high employment rate of more than 70% in the fourth industry convergence, 3D printing, after-school computer, and computer accounting practice. The output was to revitalize the local industry by threatening career support for women through vocational education infrastructure in each region. In addition, uh, the Women Reemployment Support Center under the Ministry of Gender Equality and Family created cooperative work that contributed to the local company's growth by fostering women HR through Tibet. Women's Restart program through COPOS TVAD implies the elevation of women's competencies through level-wise courses for women with diverse academic backgrounds, income, and ages. Also, in the mid and long term, systematic career path support programs should be provided for women's re-entry and competitiveness. Therefore, uh, COPO, Korea Polytechnics, has also provided com comprehensive support services and career development cons consultations to enhance self-confidence through group counseling and strengthen job capability and employment skills for career-interrupted women. Uh, it also provides job placement services and links related uh, organizations to those who want to start ups. For a follow up after employment service, it develops an employment sustain program and supports companies through related organization in building a woman friendly environment. Furthermore, <clears throat> to prevent employed women from re entering the career interrupted stage, it helps the company with continuous monitoring and guidance for employment maintenance and work culture improvement. Korea Polytechnics as a public Tibet institution has successfully performed its role to enhance women's economic and educational empowerment. With vocational skills, confidence and high self-esteem needed for the 4.0 industry revolution, career interrupted women can re-enter society become financially independent and perform their duties. To summarize, I would like to point out that the government and the organization should first provide more women related policies to so that they can enter society and fulfill their roles. And number two, continuously provide customized education and training courses to educate and train women with skills required by companies 
in the era of the fourth industrial revolution to improve their competencies. And number three, uh, continuous monitoring and management even after employment. Uh, well, that's all for uh, today, I guess. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, SS Professor uh, Dr. Yunga Kang. Uh, interestingly, you have highlighted uh, several points uh, on Tibet can actually make a big difference for women by uh, improving the employability of women nowadays. And also you have several programs that have uh, been uh, going on back in Korea, whereby you try to encourage more women to participate in the economic uh, activities and also uh, strengthening the HRD for Women COPO, whereby you have structured out it about um, 85 courses that has been designed to train from um, 1,200 of uh, women and up to uh, 10,000 women. Congratulate uh, for that. And also customize, uh, um, hoping that uh, for the future programs back in Korea, you can customize the education and also training courses yeah, uh, for women. Um, very good effort that has been done uh, for you for you and your team back in Korea. Uh, well done and I hope that uh, all the initiatives or all the projects that have been designed for especially for women in Korea uh, will be implemented successfully. All right, interesting. Okay. Um, how about uh, assistant professor uh, Dr. Anna? Yeah. Uh, you as the TVET educators, perhaps you can share with us um, what are the best practices and also way forward activities uh, to accelerate empowering women, especially in Indonesia, uh, towards global de development. Please welcome, Dr. Aina. Thank you very much, Dr. Doria. In Indonesia, uh, there are women's organization that act uh, as women development and empowerment forum are uh, the Indonesian Women's Empowerment Forum uh, and the Women's uh, School of Reaching, reaching, uh, reaching uh, Dreams. Uh, the name is uh, Skoper Cinta in West Java. This is an example in where I live. <laughs> it's, the, it's very interesting. This forum were uh, established with uh, the aim to, of realizing and uh, facilitating Indonesian women to exchange ideas, knowledge, and experience, uh, so that is hope uh, that they can improve uh, the quality life. <clears throat> the potential of women in Indonesia should not be ignored. Women have a big contribution, starting from family, environment, nation, and state. In the economic field, uh, for example, women uh, with their creativity are half of Indonesia human resources. Both women as entrepreneurs uh, and women workers, uh, this uh, forum uh, exists to assist the government in changing people's view that are still gender biased toward women, as well as increasing women's work, uh, are still gen uh, capacity and productivity through formal and non-formal education, training, mentoring, and then assessment. In addition, uh, wom women are also given the opportunity to uh, increase their social and economic roles in the family and society. I think Dr. Hughes uh, mentioned before, it's very important. In the context of Tibet, uh, there is no significant difference in terms of uh, the influence of gender on increasing teacher employment meaning that a woman and men have the same opportunity uh, as uh, teachers in the different fields. In 2022, uh, presidential regulation number 68 was issued uh, as a direction for the government to take steps to make the, uh, fundamental and comprehensive changes to vocational education and training in Indonesia. Uh, which uh, initially directed supply uh, supply oriented towards a demand oriented vocation. The purpose of uh, this change uh, is so that uh, TFET can produce outside workers who are ensured that are uh, aligned with industry needs and or also be able to develop uh, into independent entrepreneurs. One of the follow up uh, 
propose to build more up to that and comprehensive labor market information system so that the characteristic uh, supplies and need of workforce are uh, comprehensively described is uh, the development of labor market that includes women, youth, youth and person uh, with uh, disabilities. For example, the Minister of Education and Culture uh, of the Republic of Indonesia also made a new break, uh, breakthrough by launching uh, the upskilling and reskilling program for a high senior high school, uh, vocational senior high school. The name is SMK Teachers. The upskilling program is program to improve uh, teacher abilities uh, while reskilling is Reskilling is uh, training for new skills for vocational teachers. This program is open to all SMK teachers in Indonesia. It is hoped that female educators will always be ready to face the challenge of development and changes in national and international labor market and be able to increase comp uh, competitiveness. Indonesia education and training ecosystem work environment and industry must be supportive and inclusive for uh, inclusive of better women participation and empowerment. Bearing in uh, mind that women uh, make up of 54% of the Indonesia workforce, so uh, they have tremendous uh, growth potential. There are quite a number of actions taken uh, by government, industry and education uh, unit is order to increase the role of women in the TVET and STEM fields. One way is uh, to carry out a gender-biased education unit assessment within the industrial policy environment by conducting an initial analysis of lecturer, teacher, and student uh, data as well as program studies. The Indonesia Center of Human uh, Resources Development also collaborate with GIZ Germany to hold a woman innovation camp with a focus on the uh, Internet of Things, IoT, which was standard of female, female students and teaching staff in education unit under the Minister of Industry. Indonesia Women Informal Education, organized by the Minister of uh, Education and Culture under the Directorate of Public Education and Special Education has a very broad uh, field of work. Uh, this dimension uh, of women uh, empowerment education accommodates program which include uh, literacy education, equality education, women empowerment education, and various vocational education. Ladies and gentlemen, the various uh, program uh, previously mentioned it, uh, carry the mission or a whole efforts will uh, be made uh, in improving women's empowerment education. The expected result of this women employment education program are an increase the number of women who have income, the image of micro business group uh, is or a home industries that can support the family economy and an increase in student knowledge so that uh, in the end can improve people's standard of living. Thus, the ladies and gentlemen explain me, I'm sure that the future, the condition for women empowerment can be even better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Associate Professor Dr. Anna. Um, very interesting effort done by um, the team and also the research team from uh, Indonesia, Dr. Anna and the team. Um, she also have uh, highlighted on several uh, points here where facilitating women to express uh, their feelings and improve their daily life through the some of the forums or trainings that has been conducted. Uh, menarik ya, dia punya tajuk tadi, diskusi cinta. Huh? Uh, sangat Apa uh, Apanya? Sekoper cinta. Mena, Sekoper. Sweet case. <laughs> Love ah, sweet, sweet cinta. <laughs> So it's very heart to heart kind of feeling engagement with the women's society back in Indonesia. We also have a uh uh, Dr. Anna also mentioned about the fundamental and also changes in education of uh, uh, Indonesia. Uh, enforcement have been embarked uh, in Indonesia, whereby they try to include the Tibet, um, Tibet 
uh, into the education program, academic development, and also include women uh, in the industry's working environment, and as well as also collaboration within Indonesia and also German, uh, whereby uh, to encourage the collaboration and also uh, to expose uh, the, the exposure of the industry experience back in Germany and also with the Indonesia um, team. All right, so very interesting. Perhaps uh, now we can look inside um, the YouTube channel whether we have some, um, we have, um, some questions for the panelists. All right. So we have one question from Hajar, Zakar, Hajar Zakaria. Yeah. So this um, question is actually meant for uh, first uh, Associate Professor Dr. Anna. So how should women TVET educators prepare to be flexible and agile to facilitate innovation and build resilience? my turn to answer this question, right? Yep. Okay, thank you very much, Hajar, uh, Ibu Hajar Zakaria. Um, it's about how should women defend educators are uh, prepared to be flexible and agile to uh, facilitate innovation and build uh, resilience. Uh, the problem that occurs uh, globally is that many obstacles for women as educators and TVET are domestic problem, right? And there is a still gender inequality. For example, the number of women in important position in tertiary, uh, tertiary institution is uh, still lacking. Uh, this is lack of confidence in, in competing with men. Even though uh, the current condition, especially in Indonesia, the gender gap in education is already balanced uh, between men and women. As the vice dean, I found that the participation rate of female students in the TFET field, especially in the field on, uh, of engineering education, has increased quite a bit. Uh, they both women, but uh, they are both women and men are given the same opportunity to play a role in the in their in their field. Uh, from year to year, it is is increasing. It's very happy. What must be prepared to be more flexible and agile to build innovation? In facing the challenge of the times, there is one question that must be answered uh, and a solution sought together. What competencies must learners, both teachers, students, and then uh, school and education super community have in order to be able to compete in future world era? There are four basic competencies needed uh, for the profile uh, needed uh, for the profile of students and graduates uh, of the school generation who are expected to be able uh, compete in the 21st century learning era and FUCA world. Therefore, competencies are known as a 4C, which include uh, competencies in terms uh, of critical thinking, creativity, communication, and collaboration. By improving for uh, the 4C, FICA world will not be viewed as a tool, a challenge, but uh, instead uh, become a new opportunity. The 4C competencies should have become part of the learning process uh, and experiences in school as practical step in preparing to face the FICA world. Learning skills which must uh, accompany, uh, accompany it, uh, by the ability to innovate. Uh, mean, meanwhile, these important things uh, can only be obtained if learning is carried out in creative atmosphere. The creative atmosphere will be automatically encouraged in uh, encourage the innovation process. And this will be obtained if the learning atmosphere runs uh, independently. Maybe that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope um, the answer um, given uh, uh, will actually answer the questions coming from uh, Haja Zakaria just now. Yeah. And also we have uh, the next question. Uh, this one is actually from Yi Mei Hyung. Uh, the question will be, what is the most important strategy to be implemented 
to ensure women Tibet educators' competency can successfully deal with VUCA for women in the rural area. So this question will be channeled to TS Dr. Yusma. Well, yes, women in the rural area. So basically, we might say women in the uh, rural area specifically, they are have a very low esteem. They are uh, difficult to 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 uh, accept change, and it's quite a, uh, 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 difficult for us actually to bring them to to the mainstream of the development process. But however, they are willing to change. The basic principle is that we need to get into them, understand them. Who are they? What their strength? What they can do? What they can provide, contribute, and contribute to the development. And that is the first thing that we need to do because they are kind. Of, we are uh, is kind of outsiders for them. They are not really easily to to uh, involve with the. We might say we are kind of maybe alien to them because they are uh, have their own comfort zone and and they we might say it's not only me but uh, many people who involved with these people in the rural area they are it's quite uh, meaning that difficult to to uh, expose them to the outside of world that they have been uh, convenience they have been satisfied actually they have been satisfied with what they have but then we are cannot left them just with what they have because we need to improve them so at least they can be a part with the development and have all the benefits given by the government and and also uh, have uh, knowledgeable about what happened in the current trend of world so what we can do is that is that just the thing that i said just now we need to come to them sit with them understand them and then starting gradually we start uh, uh, i mean inject the information inject the skill training until they are happy with us then that's how we can start improve themselves then with this, uh, uh, I mean, we need to have a very good social skill, actually. And with the attitude, that's the things that we need to have to to, to, do, to deal with these people because they are usually, uh, um, you know, they are they are not really understand what happened in the current now because they are lacking from the uh, mass media, from the, the outside information. The information just get of maybe from their uh, leader in the community and the rest maybe they don't have a, a, a internet access or even a television. So it's quite difficult for them to, to expose to the outside world from what they have. So this is what the educators can be done is come to them and help them to understand the specific skills that they have and we enhance that skill to make it visible res and then at the end of the day they become resilient because we also not only focus on their skills also their soft skills because they have very low esteem we need to uh, uh, their personality improve their confidence improve their, their uh, communication skill many of them cannot speak with us even i have met this one group we do the program from the morning till the evening but it's hard for me to hear their voice even we really push them to to speak but no no words at all I, but i believe they can speak a malay language because we use the malay language as their medium but basically they do have their own dialect and language they don't speak at all or oh, we really force them then that's another thing we need to support in terms of the hard skill their soft skill and also definitely in terms of the finance and and to help them improve their uh, economic their social life to become a more quality life and to make them a better humankind so uh, basically what we say I mean, that's we need to go to them sit with them that's how we can help them to be uh, faced with the volatility to become because they are definitely very uncertainty very complex city person because they are they don't they don't understand about outside of their worlds so they may, we may say that they are very quite complex people and then we need to uh, 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 cut the gap and and um relieve them from all the the things that 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 compound them and then this is what we can uh, do meaning uh, sit with them until they can become open and ready to adapt 
and adopt with any changes uh, in front of them. Uh, it's not a, a, a easy way because uh, I mean it's easy to talk, but it's not easy to do. This is um, uh, one uh, one of the speakers said uh, last uh, yesterday. So um, it will take time, and we need to have patient and patient as well. And this will help them to become uh, more uh, visible and more resilient and become independent at the end of the day. So maybe that's the competency we need. That's the, definitely just our social skills, our attitude, beside our knowledge or beside our hard skill. The most thing I think the competency we, we, that we need is about our social skills and, and uh, attitude to, towards them because they are quite different from us and they treat us as a different people as well. Um, and just why I say, maybe they just treat us as an alien. Even if we are human, they are human, but then come back to the, their mentality, their set of, of mind, their, the, 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 the compound idea has set the specific, uh, uh, what the grounded, uh, um, mindset to them, then that is the things that we need to break first before we can bring them towards further for any changes. Uh, that's the things my, 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 that I might uh, share. I hope it is uh, answer your question, Dr. Yi. And thank you. Thank you very much. I hope um, the explanation actually uh, will, uh, at least uh, Yi Mei Hyung will get some points out of the explanation, yeah. And then uh, I think this one is also one of the questions coming from our viewers uh, at the channel, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, actually, it's coming from Hashima Hamid. Uh, I read the questions. So these questions will be for uh, SS Professor Dr. Yunga Kang. So the question is, how could the women Tibet educators' competency be enhanced to remain competitive in this digital, digital and also dynamic world? Please welcome. You're muted, uh, Dr. Kang. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as educators, we have to uh, constantly see how we can harness technology to enhance teaching and learning in Tibet. So uh, it's not just for women, or it's just for uh, all the Tibet teachers should uh, kind of, uh, like I said, harness technology. So in Korea, uh, all, a lot of uh, organizations and companies and institutions kind of provide uh, courses and programs for the teachers to uh, attend and uh, gain some new technologies. So um, we kind of, uh, as a Tibet educators, kind of uh, should kind of uh, have with the high tech courses for their for the competency enhancement in the new fields, and at the same time in teaching and training the students and the trainees. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in, in at COPO, we have all the uh, new technology kind of centers so that the women kind of uh, Tibet teachers should go and learn uh, what's going on in the new uh, world so that they can learn and to teach the students uh, the new technology. Uh, users like the teachers of the Polytech uh, Metaverse platform, like I said, can experience expanded learning activities by supplementing the uh, disadvantages of techni technical education and training that are difficult to experience due to problems such as high cost and high risk. But uh, if you go to uh, the organizations like Korea Polytechnics, they can practice uh, all the high cost and high risk kind of uh, uh, projects and adding a sense of reality. Uh, so the most significant advantage of the metaverse and AI and digitalization in education and learning is its ability to provide the necessary subject matter in an enhanced and incorporate manner. So Tibet educators should learn uh, what those kind of new technology, including metaverse and I, uh, IoT, uh, and its components and its application in the education field. Uh, 
so uh, I guess that's all for my answer. All right. So thank you very much, so Professor Dr. Uh, Dr. Yunga Kang. Um, I think we actually end to the uh, round two session. Um, I think we have uh, towards the end of the session. And to wrap up of our forum two session, yeah, with the theme of empowering women, TVET educators' competency in VUCA world, uh, us as the women of the world should be together hand in hand in making sure that all of the initiatives and also strategic agenda will be successfully executed and ultimately will need to support and continuously encourage women to acquire a technical and vocational education and training to be able to compete in the job market and also at the same time in a way it will help to improve women's socioeconomic status and inspire resilience. Once again, thank you very much uh, to all of our panelists and also the participants uh, in the YouTube channel. Uh, our panelists, the S. Dr. Yusmawati Yusuf, Associate Professor Dr. Yunga Kang, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Anna, for your time and also commitment yeah, uh, to be with us in this forum. We really hope that uh, this will not be the last uh, session for all of us to meet and also uh, we are looking forward for more future collaboration with all of the uh, panelists. Thank you. Terima kasih. Gamsahab Nida. Today I hand over to you Mr. Chaperson and Cik Wafi. Thank you very much. Uh, Rosli, as a moderator of the forum. Thank you, Dr. Thank you to Technology Dr. Ismawati so Thank you to Associate Professor Dr. Yang Kang and thank you to Associate Professor Dr. Anna as the speakers of the forum session today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your kind participant, participation and your support for this forum. On behalf of the university, thank you all for here today. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost at the end of the two-day events. Please let me invite Professor Emeritus Dr. Jailani Mohamed Yunus, the Director of Malaysia Research Institute for Vocation Education and Training, my Rivet, for the closing remarks. Please welcome, Prof. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Greetings from UTHM. Very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is our great honor to spend the two days uh, with friends from different countries. With your participation, uh, the World Congress on Tibet 2022, World Tibet successfully finished it all uh, sessions. On behalf of the organizing committee and UTHM, I would like to extend our highest respect and most uh, sincere gratitude to all the participating experts, guests, and representatives. Ladies and gentlemen, during the two-day conference, we had listened to two informative keynote speeches. And we had also uh, listened to two forums that focus on the topic of strategic leadership through industry-institution partnership in VOCA world and empowering women TVET educators' competency in VOCA world. Thanks to all keynote speakers and forum panelists for their sharing of knowledge. In addition, a total of 100 research findings have been shared by the academicians and researchers from 10 countries. The presented research findings cover the area of teaching and learning, Tibet teachers' training, management and leadership, innovation, industrial partnership, and so on. These empirical uh, findings are important to us because they provide insight and ideas in addressing the uh, existing Tibet issues and challenges. Promoting social inclusivity and well-being, introducing advanced experience and best practices, uh, as well as uh, exchanging uh, 
edges in new Tibet theories and philosophies. Thus aspects are very significant and extremely relevant to the world, the global community, especially in the worker world. Ladies and gentlemen, as the old Chinese says goes, uh, there is no never an ending phase, as well as exchanging ideas on the Tibet theories and philosophies. Thus aspects are very significant and extremely relevant to the global community, especially in the world, in the worker world. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, as the old Chinese saying goes, there is no never an ending phase. Uh, IP hours are always so short and it is time to uh, say goodbye to each other. Nevertheless, I firmly believe that the closing of this conference is not the end, but a new starting point. Our friendship and the uh, network that we had built up together must be strengthened uh, from this starting point onward. More importantly, I hope that all participating guests can enhance cooperation so that we can make joint effort in pursuing for the sustainability of Tibet in work world. Ladies and gentlemen, I look forward to meeting you again uh, in the next Work TV 2034. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you, Professor Amrata, Dr. Jalani Muhammad Yunus for the warm closing speech. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of the event of the 8th World Conference on Tibet 2022. On behalf of all committee members, I would like to express our heartiest gratitude to all the distinguished guests and members of floor for joining this conference. As organizer, of this event, Faculty of Technical and Vocational Education, APTV UTHM, and our co-organizer, Malaysia Research Institute for Vocational Education and Training, my Vet, would like to express expression notes to Regional Association of Vocational and Technical Education in Asia, RAFTE, and Colombo Pan Staff College, TPSC Philippines, as our partner for this event. This event supported by UNESCO Univoc, network member and thank you also to Persatuan Pesara and Pengajar UTHM Perkasa and Universitas Negeri Yogyakarta UNY Indonesia as our sponsor. Thank you very much and please forgive us for our shortcomings. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite everyone here to proceed to the paper presentation in the next session. The session will start at 1.45 p.m. The link is given in the chat box, and for any inquiries, please refer to the moderator in the paper presentation session. I am Abdul Wafi bin Abdul Rahman from FPTV UTHM. Would like to say thank you, and please forgive me for this two days event. With that, I end this session with Wabilahi Taufiq Wal Hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Till we meet again in the 9th Walk TV 2024. Thank you, and bye-bye.